All right, this is number seven and eight on the uh, chapter four review packet. Number seven, if f of x equals e to the x times natural log of x, then f prime of e equals blank. So what we're going to have to do here is find the derivative and then plug in e. So the derivative of my expression, well, I see a multiplication. I see a variable expression e to the x to the left, another variable expression natural log of x to the right. So I'm going to have to use my product rule here. Um, so I'm going to think of e to the x, I'm going to label that u, and natural log of x, I'm going to label that v. And then when I do my derivative, I'm going to use the product rule, and it's going to look like this. f prime of x equals u times v prime plus v times u prime. So u would just be my e to the x expression. v prime would be the derivative of natural log of x. And you might remember that the derivative of a natural log of x is 1 over x times the derivative of x, which would just be 1. So 1 over x times 1 or just 1 over x. v would be natural log of x. u prime would be the derivative of e to the x. Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times the derivative of x. So e to the x times 1, which is just e to the x. Now we plug in e, f prime of e equals e to the e. So I'm sticking an e every place I see an x. Times 1 over e plus the natural log of e times e to the e. Um, I can look at my answers and notice my possible um, answers because this is a multiple choice question. I don't see any of those listed, so I'm going to try to simplify some. Um, I can take, let's just remember e to the e over 1. So I can multiply here e to the e times 1 would be e to the e. 1 times e would be e. Natural log of e, you might remember, equals 1. So here I have 1 times e to the e, which is e to the e. Look again, still doesn't match up with any of my um, choices. Could think of this as e to the first. We have the same base. We're dividing. So here we'd subtract exponents. So this would be e to the e minus 1 plus e to the e, which is choice A on your multiple choice question on number 7 of the chapter 4 review packet, or benchmark 4 review packet. All right, next one, number 8. Um, this one, I could just start with the quotient rule right away. If I wanted to, I'm going to find the derivative. Um, but actually, I've tried that, and, and you, get, you get an answer that's correct. But if I look at my choices, my choices for number 8 are cosine of x, sine of x, negative sine of x, negative cosine of x, and 2 cosine of x. So we have to do a lot of simplifying. So maybe it would be easier, and many times it is, if you can simplify the expression before you do the derivative, it saves yourself, it saves yourself a lot of work many times. So what I'm thinking of is, I know on the unit circle, yeah, let's say I have a point here, that the, that the unit circle, the radius is 1. The distance horizontally is the cosine of my angle. Let's say this is angle x. All right? And the, this distance here is called the sine of x. So, and I know this is a right angle. So I know by the Pythagorean theorem that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1 squared or 1. So that's the Pythagorean theorem. So that's a Pythagorean identity for trigonometry. Um, and I'm seeing sine squared up there. So wow, if I subtracted cosine squared off both sides, I'd have sine squared of x equals 1 minus cosine squared of x. So I could substitute that in in place of sine squared of x. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. So you might think, well, why would you want to put a, a longer, it looks like it's less simplified than this side, why would I want to plug that in? Well, because I see the 1 minus cosine x on the bottom, I might be able to do some canceling. Now, you can't just cancel the 1s here because of the minus, and you can't just cancel the, cancel the cosines. What we could do is actually factor this, though, because you might remember this factoring pattern. If you have two things squared, a squared minus b squared, that factors in a minus b times a plus b. That's what my pattern. So what I have here, I have 1 squared minus cosine squared. So I can factor that into 1 squared is 1 times 1, negative cosine squared of x, that's negative cosine of x, times positive cosine of x. Copy. 
down to the denominator. Now I have something I can factor, because this is multiplication here. So I can factor this 1 minus cosine of x with this 1 minus cosine of x. f of x now equals 1 plus cosine of x. Now I still need to do my derivative. That's the reason I keep writing down the symbol, no derivative until now, f prime of x. The derivative of 1 would be 0. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So my answer is going to be f prime of x equals negative sine of x, which is choice C. So you can see that by simplifying the expression first, using an identity and some factoring, that doing the derivative ended up being pretty easy. Whereas otherwise I would have had done the quotient rule and then try to simplify and reach this answer, which is probably possible, but I think this is probably the easier way to do it.